the um, services that we're able to provide here is treatment for aggressive blood cancers or hematologic malignancies. What falls under that umbrella is everything from acute leukemias, acute myeloid leukemia, acute lymphoid leukemia, to non-Hodgkin lymphoma and Hodgkin lymphoma, multiple myeloma, myeloproliferative diseases. I think what's unique to these conditions is that many of them require emergent treatment. They are not diagnoses that can wait to be uh, treated and managed in a standard outpatient clinic setting. So we have the hospital infrastructure to be able to rapidly get these patients in, get them all the baseline testing that they need, whether it's bone marrow biopsies, scans of any varieties, different types of intravenous or IV access to get their chemotherapy into them, we're able to get that moving pretty quickly. I think the other thing is we're able to give chemotherapy that we we call uh, high dose or aggressive chemotherapy. So treatments that require a lot of additional uh, monitoring, both from a nursing and a physician standpoint. What we do is we provide this service to our community partners to say that when you get a patient that you recognize as needing those services, we will commit to you to get them in and get them treated as quickly as possible. In terms of the treatment for the various blood cancers, I would say each cancer, it, has very different treatment. And I can leave it somewhat general by saying we need intense chemotherapy. Sometimes it's a combination of four to five different chemotherapies that are given over a span of days or even weeks. And sometimes they require a combination of inpatient and outpatient care. One of the things that a lot of these aggressive blood cancers end up leading to is there's a bone marrow or a stem cell transplant. That is basically a situation where we give high doses of chemotherapy to try to wipe out whatever remaining cancer or tumor cells may be left behind. Oftentimes when we do that, we end up wiping out the patient's blood forming cells. And so we have two ways of rescuing those blood forming cells. We can do that with what we call an autologous stem cell transplant, where we bring in the patient's own cells that we've previously collected prior to giving them that toxic chemotherapy. We can uh, do that with what we call an allogeneic stem cell transplant, where we actually bring in a donor's cells. And usually we do that in conditions where the patient's own blood cells might be the root of the problem. They may contain the cancer, so we can't reintroduce those cells. So we get a healthy donor cells brought in. Both of them are complicated and kind of have their own pros and cons, which we usually detail for the patients when we see them. There are certain conditions which necessitate only an allogeneic transplant. There are certain conditions that necessitate just an autologous transplant, and sometimes both are options. And those are where um, our kind of not only individual provider decision making comes in, but our whole bone marrow transplant team's decision making comes in. In terms of outcomes with the type of cancers that we've dealt with, I would have to really talk very specifically about each cancer to be able to give you details on outcomes. But I will say that what we generally tell patients, especially when they're newly diagnosed and we're almost limited with the amount of information that we have. We have a diagnosis, but no more detailed testing on the kind of the subsets of that diagnosis. We usually tell patients that most of the diseases we treat are aggressive, but that our goal is to put them into remission, meaning getting rid of their disease, and for a lot of these to get them to cure. Now we have to say that to get them to cure in many circumstances means really stepping up the treatments to something that is quite intense and often burdensome and will require a huge commitment and change in life on the patient and family's part. And so oftentimes that treatment is bone marrow or stem cell transplant. So I will tell you that our initial conversations can never be um, really positive from the standpoint that we are talking about a major lifestyle change for a lot of these patients. We're talking about treatments that are gonna come with side effects, intense follow-up, complications, things like that. But what we do try to do is tell them the next step, which is, yes, we're talking about a serious condition that requires serious treatment, but we also have the ability to potentially give you a very aggressive treatment with the goal of curing you or significantly prolonging the time that this blood cancer stays away for you.